you, but our next guest is backing the secretary and giving some different perspective here. It may surprise you. Uh, the VA, he is independent senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders. He's also the chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee, joining us from Capitol Hill. Senator, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, the first question is an obvious one. Do you believe the VA is doing what it needs to do by our veterans? That is, that is the key question. And let me just say this. If you talk to veterans all over this country, if you look at patient satisfaction surveys, what you end up finding is that the VA holds up as good or better than private hospitals. By and large, veterans throughout America believe that they're getting pretty good health care. But here's the main point, Chris. The VA serves six and a half million veterans, 200,000 of them every single day. What is clear is that in a system that large, there are problems, and there are some serious problems. So I think that in a pretty good system, there are problems. We have got to get at those problems. Because at the end of the day, the people who put their lives on the line to defend us deserve the best quality care in America, and we are going to get at those problems, and we're going to root them out. But you know, Senator, that a big thing driving the concern is that this is not new. Not just what we uncovered in the uh -huh. CNN investigation, but the reason, the mandate for Shinseki when he was put in, Senator, was that we knew there were big lapses at the VA that had to be addressed, and you could argue that have not been. Isn't it time for accountability? The answer is you make a very good point, and that is exactly one of the questions that I'll be asking uh, Secretary Shinseki today. But in terms of these accusations, mm -hmm. one of the things I think, Chris, that we don't want to do is get out in front of ourselves. Uh, the truth of the matter is that the VA is now, that the Inspector General of the VA, an independent entity, is now investigating what took place in Phoenix. And we do not know what took place in Phoenix. The allegations may be correct, they may not be correct, and that's what we're looking at right now. Why do you not trust the CNN reporting that Drew Griffin and his team did on this? When they talk right. about the 40 people, the deadly delays, uh, how the way the process is run and the waiting game is played wound up costing lives. Okay. Can I read you a quote? Please. All right. This is what CNN said on April 30th. At least 40 U.S. veterans died waiting for appointments at the Phoenix Veterans Affairs health care system, many of whom were placed on a secret waiting list. End of quote. A few days later, this is what CNN said. Now, what Dr. Foote, and Dr. Foote is the physician who made the allegations, what Dr. Foote and others have told us is that of the many, many people on that list, all veterans, 40 of them have since passed away. The allegation is not that the delay in care caused that, only that that is what is now being investigated. Did the delay in care of these people on the secret waiting list actually cause these deaths? We don't know. But that is what the Office of Inspector General is, in fact, investigating. Is it unfair and criticism, the, Senator, to see that you sound like a lawyer defending the hospital as opposed no, to I'm a just, senator trying to make sure the right thing is done? That is exactly what I want, Chris. I want the right thing to do. The second statement is exactly correct. We don't know. And that's why we have the, why the VA has asked an Inspector General to investigate that. The first statement is not correct. Well, hold on a second. Senator, again, with all due respect. We don't know that the first statement is not correct. You're saying you don't have the proof of it being correct to your satisfaction. This doctor that felt I... that it was correct, and no, you don't didn't. know that it isn't correct. No. What the second statement said is we don't know. No, the second we statement now... says we know that they're dead. You're saying you want to connect the dots better. That's fair pushback, but it's not that we know it's incorrect. We know that people die every day. We don't know why they die. All right, anyhow, Chris, I don't want to argue that point to the cows come home. Here's what you got. You got a system that by and large, I think, works reasonably well for veterans. I think you got 300,000 employees out there, many of them who are veterans themselves, who are trying to do their best. You got some cutting edge stuff in terms of telehealth, in terms of complementary and alternative medicine. There are problems, and we have got to get at those problems, but we need the facts to lead us to where we want to go. 
I hear you, Senator, and you know that it's not my motivation just to kind of cherry pick and to try to uh, do right. yellow journalism on this. There is right. heightened sensitivity because these are the men and women that we have promised the best to, and we Absolutely. have to ensure that, of course, there are always endemic problems with health care. We know that story all too well. But it just it gets a little bit of a bad feeling here about what the motivation is for these hearings, whether it's to defend the VA or to do the hard truth of accountability and make change. Okay, good question. This hearing is to look at VA health care. What I have said, Chris, and I'll say it again, the day after the Inspector General completes its investigation, I don't know if it's the day after, but as soon as possible, we will do hearings. What today's hearing is about is to look at the quality of VA health care. What are the problems? And as you have indicated, there are problems. And the major problem, I think, is what you just touched on. There have been reports year after year about waiting lists. Mm -hmm. Has the VA effectively dealt with that? I don't think so. There is another issue. When you have waiting lists, may it simply be that the VA doesn't have enough doctors and nurses and staff? Are we putting enough money into the VA? Is the VA appropriating its resources appropriately? Are there some places in the country where, in fact, you may have too much staff and other places where the VA population is growing where we don't have another, enough staff? Those are some of the questions that I think we need to explore. You have not mentioned the secretary, Senator. Do you believe that the secretary has done his job to date? I think by and large, under very difficult circumstances, Secretary Shinseki has done a good job. I think where he is very, very weak is in terms of communication. I think he does not a good job in communicating with the Congress or certainly with the American people and the media. I think if areas, you know, when he came into office, Chris, just one example, if you can imagine this, do you know how claims were done before Shinseki came into office? They were done by paper. In the year 2009, we were still doing claims by paper. He has transformed that system into an electronic system. You and I know that one of the scandals in America is the level of homelessness among veterans. Mm -hmm. We are making some significant progress in reducing that. So I think, you know, I'm not here to, I think the secretary has made mistakes, but ultimately I think he is doing a decent job. All right, and look, we wanted you on New Day, Senator, because you deserve the respect that you get when it comes to veterans and taking care of their interests. That's why there's so many eyeballs on this and on the secretary's testimony and the pushback today. Thank you for coming on with us. Appreciate it and look forward to what happens. Good. Thank you. All right. Take care, Senator. Okay. Coming up next on New Day, would LeBron James lead an NBA boycott if Donald Sterling isn't forced to sell the Clippers? Rachel Nichols found out in an exclusive interview.